You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible Understanding Contradictions 1 Corinthians 14.34 Part 2 In Part 1 we saw a number of funny things going on in this verse But there's another funny thing I haven't quoted the whole verse yet 1 Corinthians 14.34 ends as the law also says Women should be silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak but should be subordinate, as the law also says. Now which law is that? Often when Paul mentions a nomos, a law, he means the Torah, the Pentateuch, or the oral teaching that surrounded it. Is that what he means here? Well, the best systems of cross-reference can offer us here, as a possibility from the Torah, is Genesis 3.16. And to the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing, in pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Hardly the best foundation for a legal case claiming that women should be silent in public. So what is going on, and how do we deal with passages like this, where the biblical writer seems to contradict themselves? Well, it seems to me the obvious principle is firstly, that we assume the biblical writer was sensible enough not to have contradicted themselves. If your interpretation of 1 Corinthians 14.34 demands that you say Paul is contradicting himself, frankly, I think you're wrong. I'd prefer to believe that Paul's sensible and you're stupid than to believe that you're sensible and Paul's stupid. So, some Christians believe that Paul here is forbidding some women, particular women, the women, and notice that the NET Bible, unlike the NRSV, translates it as the women, and one of the oddities about this verse is that Paul uses the definite article in front of the women. It's the women, some particular women, who mustn't participate vocally in worship, presumably as a local contextual decision, though that one's a little bit difficult if you look at verses 39 and 40 of the same chapter. Another possibility is we know that Paul, like most preachers and all scholars, sometimes quotes others. He quotes the Bible, he quotes pagan poets and philosophers, at least according to Acts 17, he quotes Christian songs, he quotes his opponents, like many Old Testament prophets and like Jesus. So here is Paul quoting Greek or Roman law, or is he citing Genesis 3.16? If it's Genesis 3.16 he doesn't say so and it fits badly with the other steps of his argument but it fits Greek and Roman custom and household codes really well in that case the question would be where does this quote start and finish and how is Paul using the quote? third possibility is that these verses are an addition to the text by later scribes they're positioned differently in the text in some manuscripts they don't fit well with the flow there are some words and language features here that are unusual in 1 Corinthians and an important manuscript like Sinaiticus marks these verses off from the surrounding text. So maybe this isn't Paul at all, but it's an area where the text is corrupt. The later church, which did forbid women, stuck in a few verses. So how do we deal with a passage where Paul seems to contradict himself? Well, the obvious first rule is that in terms of the issue that we're thinking about women speaking in church we say quite clearly that the overwhelming evidence of Paul is that Paul accepted women speaking, leading, prophesying and praying in church and we can't use Paul to support the opposite about this particular passage well frankly I have to admit I'm stumped I'm not a New Testament scholar and I haven't got the skills to make my own guess as to what's going on but I've given you three or four possibilities sometimes we just have to say I don't know bye for now